Hi, I'm Marnie Becker, and I've been asked to do the demonstration, the demo for this month's Illinois Watercolor Society. Um, I feel especially honored to, to be asked to do this because Illinois Watercolor Society was the first exhibition or society that accepted one of my paintings, and it was also the first society in which I became a signature member. Um, <clears throat> I've not been a lifelong painter. I came to painting after a career in education and um, I started taking some watercolor classes. One of the first ones I took was with Ingrid Albrecht, who basically showed me how to hold a, a paintbrush. I didn't really know anything. And I then moved, uh, kind of found a niche in doing impressionist portraits. And I've been doing that for a few years and had some success with it. Uh, one of my portraits was featured in Splash, the best of watercolor. And um, then I kind of was thinking about how I could move away from that and do things that just required a little more um, thinking on my part and figuring out what would make it more interesting as opposed to just representing a photo. And um, for me, I, kind of, I moved a little bit more toward abstract and that started working for me. I, um, I usually, I still do portraits and I also do uh, urban scenes. And I start with a portrait and then I use several programs to edit it to try to get the look I want. It's been described um, in some magazines as pointillism. It's really a little different than that because the color fields are much larger than pointillism, but um, it, it's okay. So what I will usually do is take a photo and so like here is a photo that I took if you can see it and then I ended up painting it like this so what I did was take away all the small detail and focus on the larger shapes to get the just to get the idea and I like the viewer to be able to look at it for a while and kind of just stay in the photo and not not be able to just see a representation of the picture so this is another one this is one of the first ones I did which I would say, and here's the photo. I mean, here's the painting, the finished painting. And I think it's, it's uh, important to start with a relatively simple piece like this, if you're going to start doing something like this. Um, I later moved on to this. This is over by Michigan Avenue and Crossing Michigan, I call it. And then it, it became this. And I, I'm pretty happy with these, they're kind of fun. Um, my process also involves extensive drawing, but I've gone to projecting my drawings because there's so many small pieces on there that um, I have to get all those pieces in and I have to get them right. I usually spend like two or three hours on those drawings. Um, it's, uh, it breaks your back, but it gets what I want, you know, from the pieces. So. Um, I use a black and white reference, which I, the one I'm doing today is, I took this photo, this is a regular, this is just a little photo, but I like the way the light and dark, which is very important to me, shown on her. And then I created the, this is, it's hard to see it, but it is the same, it's just a very strange, see that? When you look closely, you can see it's more shapes. So I did that and I like the way that turned out, so I thought that would be the one that I would do today. Um, my palette is, um, I'll show you this little palette I have, a small palette. I don't have, I have 16 colors that I normally use. Um, they're all warm and I've kind of developed that from uh, doing portraits. So I've stuck with that palette. I sometimes add a little bit, a few other things to it, but not often. So it's a warm palette. All my colors are transparent. I um, use one brush generally, and it's this uh, Raphael Kalinsky Sable. It's expensive, but it's the only brush I use. And, and that suits me because um, I'm trying not to get bogged down in the smaller detail. Uh, I'm not saying I never do, and I'm not saying that I don't do that, you know, I don't get bogged down. But uh, that's my goal, is to keep it, keep it kind of large. Um, I usually, if you can see my painting, let me see if I can get this up closer. I usually um, use a kneaded eraser to blot out most of the uh, pencil lines, but I'm keeping them in there this time so that you can a little bit see more what I'm doing. <clears throat> I do use a black and white reference, it's over here, 
just to get the values and it also frees me up for um, whatever colors I want to use. So for my first, so we'll start with the first layer. The first layer that I do, I only use three colors um, for the skin tones and I put that over the whole painting of skin tones. The um, colors I use are uh, Holbein, Vermilion, Vermilion Hue, I use um, Quinn Gold, and I use Peacock Blue, which seems pretty bright, but it's um, become subdued under more layers of paint. My technique is glazing. I use lots and lots of layers of very, very light colors. And after I get the first wash on, in the parts that are in the bright sun, that might be the only wash that that part sees. So right now I'm mixing up my colors um, to try to get this ready. I've never done this. Well, I've done one demo before, but it was one or two, but they were not on video. So this is a quite a challenge. So this, hopefully this will work out. So if you can, let me get some more water in here. I'm not used to talking while I'm painting because, you know, painting is a pretty solitary thing. All right, so this is what I have. That's Those are my three wells. You can see two of them anyway. There we go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put those on. I do skin tone first, or just one layer of skin tone first. So we'll try that. We'll see if we can get this right, okay? So I'm going to start with her face, actually. <clears throat> So what I'm doing now is um, looks dark, but remember that this will be covered <clears throat> excuse me, with a lot of layers. So I'm kind of just randomly painting over everything. The only thing I don't paint over is if there's like a white um, reflection, you know, the whites in the eyes. If I, I, I don't paint over that. I do paint over teeth. There, there aren't any teeth in this one, though. So I'm gonna do a little bit of dark over here, just a little. That's the that's the peacock, but it's um showing up pretty light. Um, the reason I do the underpainting is I think it ties the painting together. Um, I'm sh I know. You know, everybody has their own method, but for me, it just ties, it unifies the painting a little bit. And um, I like that, that's, that's important to me. <clears throat> so I also have to do, in this part, I have to do her arms because they are part of it, of course. I'll put that into her hair a little bit. Um, that's fine. is my, um, I use this person a lot for a model because even though she's young, she lets me do things that are more serious. I like to, I don't do too much cute stuff. I'm little kids, well my grandkids, yeah, but so she lets me <clears throat> tell her how to pose and she'll do it. So she's pretty, I'm pretty happy with this. But again, this can go in can go into, I'm trying to make sure you see me, because as I said, I'm not too good at this. I think I'll push this a little closer. Move this up a little bit. Hopefully that's better. Okay, so, and we have to do this up here, because this, this is really important to put a little more gold in her upper arm up here. So um, just laying down that first wash of color, <clears throat> which is always nice because it's the possibility of what will happen. I think I'll 
actually add a little green in here, just a little random hooker's green. Just um, let me see, I think it would be under here would be nice. Just light, I think I'll do a little lighter than that. So just getting that first layer. <clears throat> I don't know about anyone else, but I had a lot of time to paint during the, well, still. It's kind of interesting because painting is so solitary that really having to stay home, if we're able to, wasn't so bad. Okay, so now what I have is, I bet there, that can even go into there. So do we have any more skin? This goes into here. Our arm, this comes down here a little bit down there. I think we need to do some of that. Let's do a little darker in there. <coughs> because that is under her arm and it's under that shadow of sun. Okay, so we have to make sure that dries. Yeah, I have to make sure that dries. I think I got it all. <coughs> and while that's drying, let me put a little bit of yellow up there. This quin gold right up here. These parts are high in the sun. And as I said before, I would normally take my um, uh, kneaded eraser and just get some of those lines out by blotting it, which helps um, the dark lines, especially on the face is where I really like to look at that. But um, <clears throat> as I said, I'm going to leave those in so you can get a little bit better idea of what I do. I uh, hope it helps. Okay, so I've got that. I'm just gonna wait a few minutes for it to dry. It's really hard to see it because it's drying very light too, see? <clears throat> just a little bit. Um, usually I will start with the eyes. And um, because I always think that eyes and teeth in a portrait are really important. And that's what eyes and teeth um, <clears throat> make, the, make the portrait. If I get those wrong, there's no point in going on. That's why I start early. Uh, some people do, like with landscapes, they'll do that sky first because they know if it's wrong, it's not gonna work. Okay, hmm. so. I'll put a little color in her eyes, even though it's dark. I think we'll add a little just color. I never, um, I usually don't do eyes the same because I just think it's more interesting. So I'm going to use Antwerp. And again, everything is done in layers. So first thing I'm gonna do is do a little bit of, just a little light layer here in her eye. This will be darker. I'll put some green in that one too. Sometimes when I do um, when I do the adjusting the portrait, it takes away the color in the eyes. It makes a dark area darker. So you have to be pretty careful if you want to try to get that in there. Um, I wanted a little color in her eyes, even though it may go darker later. <clears throat> but this, she has really blue eyes, even though I kind of don't do the, you know, I don't do the same thing. I'll actually put a little purple in her other eye, a little mineral violet. That's a good color um, that I like. And um, I'm more than happy if anybody wanted to contact me to find out what, let's put this this way. I hope there's a little what colors I have in my palette. Um, uh, I'm sure that you can get my email. I'll give it to you. And I have a Facebook page too. So you, and I have a watercolor site, a page called Barney Becker Watercolors. So I'll be glad to tell you that or anything else you want to know. Okay, so I'm just that, that needs, let's get something else in there. Um, perhaps a little of that peacock again might be nice just to drip, drip it in there at the bottom. 
kind of cool. So that's what I have there. So we're going to leave that for a second and kind of go see where else I can go. I'm going to have to do a lot more in her eyes, but I'm going to let that dry a minute before I really get into that. <clears throat> so let's try, um, let me think here. I want to get a little, I'm going to do a little bit of her eyebrow. Um, they are not really showing a lot, but we'll give them a little color. So I'm just going to use a little burnt umber and maybe some of the Quin Gold and might drop something else in there too. She does have on this drawing here, you can see that her eyebrow is there. It's not so much on the other one, but it is on this one. I like the way that goes up here. Let's put a little more brown in there. Let's see. Probably the middle of the eyebrow gets a little darker. Although I don't often go by whatever they have, I kind of just like to make it creative. So hopefully that'll be okay. And over here, we're going to just give her a little bit of color right here, right above her. This is going to be right here. And I think I want that to be a little darker. <clears throat> so just getting a little bit of shape what I call this is getting a little shape in because really there's so much more to do okay she looks good and clownish now so let's think about um, let me think if I can uh, bring in let's see I think I'll do yeah let's do a little I'm using some vermilion scarlet lake and Windsor yellow deep Put a little bit of color below her eye. Let's try to get this in. So we want to get a little bit in here. I'm going to add. I'm going to add a little more Scarlet Lake in there. It's a really powerful color, but to drop it in, one thing I do like to do is get um, several different colors in each shape that I'm doing. So I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to go all the way around her eye that way. A little light, maybe. A little light. Because I'm not sure how this, how I want this to come out. This is a nice, there's a nice shadow in there. Let's do a little bit here. Yep. So, so I'm starting with that shape. I think I'll put a little um, blue up here. Because I think that the heavy lid over her eye is going to look nice with a little blue, a little Antwerp again. That's a good one. I've learned not to put too much violet around eyes and skin because it ends up looking like um, a black eye or bruises. So I don't want that. I like the way this goes up here. I think we'll give her a little. That's going to be a little darker later. It's starting to come in. Yeah, starting to come in. Let's go over here to her left eye and do the same thing. We need a little bit of color. Let me start. Let me get that. That's a little eyelash. Let's do this down here because there's a lot of oops. Want more red? There's a lot of red in the center of your eye. I like to put that in there. It brightens up the eye a little. Oh, that's going to look cool. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So that's coming along. This might be a little heavy because we want to put a lot of different glazes over it. And there, I might give her a little a white. The whites of her eye look good in there. Let's, okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit over here. This is going to be like her uh, eyelashes and stuff and I'll do this over here too so I'm going to take I'm going to almost make it black it's going to be a burnt umber and ultramarine blue I don't like to use black uh, so I always make my own with burnt umber and ultramarine blue let's see I'm gonna get that I'll show you how we're doing that 
And I don't want it specifically. Whoops. Oh no. Whoops. Sorry. It is a. You can see this down here. The, it's the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Just makes it a darker brown, not um, black, but a darker brown. So I'm going to start in here. I'm just going to go a little bit in here. I like that little. I want that to come into her eye. This pretty nicely and I think it should be over here I think we'll be adding a little bit to that too I'll put a little more blue in her eye a little more violet in there to kind of go with that yeah that looks good so it melts together I want that okay so we've got a little bit of that um, and again the more ultramarine you add the darker it gets like black All right, again, over here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go down to this one. This comes down here, and it kind of goes up here. Just got a little bit there. I'm looking at my reference all the time. Let's, I like that. Let's get this one a little more over here. Um, we're going to leave that alone for a while, and I think the only thing I'm going to do right here is do a little shadow under her nose. And uh, one thing I learned about noses is a lot of people paint them very dark, but what's inside a nose is really more skin. So what I use for that is I use the Vermilion Hue and Ultramarine Blue. And I'm just going to put a shadow there because it's really not inside her nose, it's just the shadow that I'm seeing down there just a little okay let's get that and make sure that's kind of okay just a little shadow because I can make that later with a different color and I think I'll start I'll do a little bit of her mouth and then we'll work on her skin tone so her mouth is on the outside is kind of light it gets darker of course as it goes toward the inside so I think what I'll do is put a little Scarlet Lake, Scarlet Lake and Aurelian. See if that works. Very lightly, just on this outside part of her mouth. Um, this is right here. Yeah, I think that's going to be a little bit more. Put a little, let's put something else in there just to give a little, a little extra so that it's not so boring. <clears throat> put this up here. That's a little um, alizarin. So you're looking at her from up above, so you really don't see much of a um, upper lip on this. This is goes lighter as it gets outside. Um, I'm not sure whether this is. I think this is part of her lip too, but I'm gonna leave that right now in case it's a shadow. And there's a hard line on her upper lip, which is interesting um, because of the way we're looking at it. It's not a soft line, so we're just gonna take that and let me think. Maybe a, even a little orange with um, some Scarlet Lake might be good for that one. Light, very light. Okay, so she goes down, and this goes down there, and that goes up there. I'm gonna have to do a lot more work on that because that's um, that is just a very light beginning of her looking down on her upper lip, if you can see it here. Okay. Okay. I think now that what I should do is start to put in some of just start to lay in some of her skin tones. So um, let me think what I, let me see what I'm going to do. I use, my skin tone colors are usually um, Vermilion Hue and um, Aureolian, Aurelian, Scarlet Lake and Windsor Yellow Deep. 
and and sometimes adding some of my brilliant orange and some of my um, quin gold and I like to vary those I like to get several colors in one area so I'm gonna be working on that and I'll talk hopefully I'll talk to you while I do that all right let's see let's do um, Scarlet Lake and Windsor Yellow Deep very lightly very very lightly I don't want it to be Scarlet Lake can be pretty strong when you do it a lot so let's start up here right underneath her overhanging arm is a really nice hard shape that shape okay so I want to try to get a little more of that in there I should use sometimes I use Quinn coral which is a really pretty color from Daniel Smith but I don't want to stop and get that out so we'll just use this and this is good too remember we're doing it lightly 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 all of these are different each shape has uh, more power to it so some are going to be uh, just one or two layers and some are going to be a lot okay so you want to get that so as you see I'm just starting and this is going to be one this is going to be one there's so many in here this is a fun part when you start doing it like this let's try um, let's try this I don't want that to be all the way let's try this See that? That's pretty cool. Oh, I'm gonna get a little yellow in there. I'll actually put a little um, lizard in there. Uh, I think with that lizard, drop a little in. Just drop in there. It's kind of cool in there like that. Again, here we go with vermilion hue and um, Windsor Yellow Deep too. Let's try that. See how I've, um, it's varying shades. I'm gonna drop in that Scarlet Lake now because I, I really do like to have several different colors in there floating around, especially in these big shapes. It kind of makes it really cool. To me, it makes it very interesting. But, you know, everybody has to do what they like. Yeah, that's, look at how it's, it's looking pretty clownish, but that's what it's supposed to look like at this point can't say it works every time but hopefully I would like a little hmm, let's see let's try that one just oh, I like that see how that has several different shapes in there or colors in that one shape yeah I like that <clears throat> oh one thing I failed to mention was um uh, I think I forgot to mention on the on the first layer, um, some of some of that layer will be the only layer that or only glaze that that part C that that skin has. If if in fact that it's um, a highly high hot light place, so like up here, we may not have anything more. Okay, so right now let's try this little thing right around here. This is, I'm gonna leave that light in the middle. That's kind of interesting. It's a little bit of light shining on her in the middle, and I like that. So we'll try to get some of this in here. It does end up looking pretty crazy at the beginning, but it's kind of interesting to see how it, you know, all comes together. <clears throat> okay. Um, one thing I've been trying to do which is really hard is to sit back and think and look at what I'm doing because um, instead of being impetuous, I know that there are a lot of people that are really spontaneous with their painting, but it, for me, it doesn't work that way. I wish, um, I wish it worked that way. And I can, you know, I'm not a painter that finishes something in a couple hours either. It's a long process for me, but I'm trying to get slow, more slow, slowly slower excuse me okay so you can see that she's starting out kind of interesting and in this picture this part's very light here so we really want it to gradually go out to where it's very light there we're still gonna work on this a lot we have everything to work on but let's try some more um, I think I might put a little arbitrary color in 
I think I might put a little green on her upper lip um, just really lightly because I may want to cover over that again but on that little thing called the full I think it's called the fulcrum is that how you say it it's that shows down by your lip that goes into your lip yeah she's looking very interesting right now isn't she let's put a little color over here so I've already used Antwerp. Um, let's try Peacock, a little Peacock over there. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, uh, let's see, do I want it in here? I'll try it in here and see what's going to come back out. It's pretty bright, actually. There, wow. Okay. This, we need some red in there, too, our skin. figure that out. Hmm. <clears throat> I think I missed drawing a line in there. I think this should be a line down here, so I'm going to try to uh, just paint that the way it should be. Should have thought I caught everything when I went over it, but I, I didn't, I guess. Whoa. Okay. Interesting. Okay, now Let's try to see if we can um, bring a little bit down on her nose. We'll try this shape right in here. See how this goes? I want it to be very light. Mm. Okay, so now I'm gonna add, I'm gonna arbitrarily put this yellow in, not mix it on the plate, or excuse me, on my tray, because I like to get that difference that's in there. So that's going to be nice. Bring it up a little bit. And then I'm going to come down in here and, and add it into here. And see, while I'm doing that, I can go over this layer again, this one, because this is a darker layer. Ooh. Yeah, starting to see, be able to see the different shapes. There's so much to do, so much more. I always like to get the background in, some layer of background in <clears throat> before too long because I feel like um, that ties the painting together. Otherwise, I'm sort of focusing on the background and I don't want to do that. But I'm, so let me paint a little bit more here and then we'll think about what I want to do for the background. Actually, I think I will. I, I think I want it to be green, which was what the original color was, but <clears throat> and I like that. So I think I'm going to start with um, some Oriole back there in the background. Make it a blue-green. It had a really nice, um, I like this sort of diagonal line that goes through it too, so I want to incorporate that. Then I get some, I'm using Oriole in, just straight, nothing else. A lot of water. So we go up here. Um, I'm, I don't. I want to get a little bit into her hair so that it's part of the background. And very carefully around her hand because I really like that hand. Is I think that hand is almost like the most important part. It looks so has so many shapes to it and stuff. Different, um, so many different colored areas to it. So, there, that's starting to look kind of neat. Just yellow right now. Let's get over there. I'll actually get this a little lighter. There, that's starting to, yeah. So I think, and then I'll combine this with maybe Antwerp, maybe Peacock. Depends what color green I want there. Let's get it down here. And 
this is pretty nice over here. This will be a hard edge. No, this is going to be very bright here because this is hot light right here. We won't do anything more there. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Got a little color in here. Easy. One of my problems is always remembering to make enough if I'm doing a background to mix enough paint. <clears throat> I don't like my paints to be totally mixed on the palette because I think when you have for me, when I have different colors that kind of come into that, I think it looks really nice. Uh, let's see. I'm starting to get a little color in there. That's good. Uh, there we go. Oops. Make sure I have this pin down here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, so right now it looks pretty good. I think that I will actually do a little bit on her hair right now. Um, I want it to be that golden. She has kind of golden hair, and I do like that. And there's a lot of light in there that I want to um, incorporate. So I think that I might even do some Quinn Gold, just a very with mixed with this Oriole right now just to get a little bit of lightness in her hair and then there's got to be a lot more definition that happens later but right now I think um, we'll try some of this she has a lot of light coming on here up there I think I might actually blot some of that off or maybe too much right up there. That's good. Okay. This comes down here. A little bit up here. This. Then we go over here. I need some of this white for now, just for the light. We might have to um, go back in there and do that, but <clears throat> same here. I'm not going to do every place here. I'm going to kind of you know, a little bit because we have dark, we have light. Uh, this, that's the background right there. Okay. Let's see if we can get some right here. A little bit of this. We'll add some burnt sienna probably. More Quinn Gold, more burnt sienna. A little bit of mixtures of um, Kind of making a raw sienna with um, oreolin and uh, the burnt umber maybe but she has i want that light to show up on her uh, hair up above especially it's going to be darker over here you can see because this the um her arm is shielding that sun okay so this is all here we'll still do this a little bit the light areas Very dark in there. I'm going to get that in there. It shows her hair. I'm not sure. I think this is her hair. I don't know that that's her hair right there. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm talking too softly. I think we all, that might be her shirt. Sometimes it's hard when you're when you've manipulated this so much you can't even tell what the regular photo is anymore. So you have to be really kind of careful looking around and see. Just make sure you know what shape is what. Yeah, that, you know, that's a problem for me. Okay, more is hair coming down here, a little hair. This is probably from her hair too. She has nice. Okay, so right there we have, um, right there we have basic start. I'm not gonna, do anything yet about her uh, shirt. Um, let me see if I can develop a little bit more. Well, I might start her shirt. I think I am going to do that for you. I'm trying to be a little bit more well-rounded, you know. So, I think with her shirt, I think we'll do a little 
yellow and peacock. So I want to start with the yellow. Let me see if I can mix that too. It's kind of pretty green. No, I think we just better do regular peacock here. Um, because I don't want it to confuse with the uh, grass and, or what's behind her. So we'll just do a little light peacock. <clears throat> I don't want it to be overly green. It will conflict with what's behind her. Just get this in here. Peacock's a bright color. You gotta go. You have to go easy with it. So as you, there we go. We start with this. Start up here. Um, when I do this too, I like to get a lot of arbitrary color in. Um, so let's think. Um, I put a little darker blue in there. A little Windsor blue because I mean it still will read as a blue shirt but it'll have a little bit different here and there uh, colorations in it and I like that so there's that see that yeah and then even down here where it's a little bit darker I think we might try to even put in I put in there a little purple maybe just for for interest really darker darker it's right where it's dark right dark right there but it's going to be the blue shirt is just going to be a little bit lighter okay I got that we're gonna get this blue in here but we want it very light because this is where the light down here is where the light takes over and shines on it this here. Okay. And then this down here. It's going to be very. This is there's the sunshine part. So that has to be light. The rest is pretty dark because it's being covered by her arm. But I like these variations in color here. And let's see if we can put some more of those in, especially where it's light. Right up here. So I've got that. Yeah, look at that. That's turning out nicely. Again, it's the same. It's blue, but it's got different variations in it. Blue green. It's got so that makes it look to me so much more interesting. I, I try to do that with the skin and with um clothing or anything else. Something I learned from one of my portrait classes with Ted Nuttall, if you ever want a good portrait class, the best. Okay. It's funny how quickly it starts to look to take shape, even though I know that, and you know, that there's so much more to do, but it's pretty interesting when it, it's already taking shape here. It's crazy. Okay, so we have a little bit over here. This is, yeah, that's for this. I have a little um, arm sleeve here. That goes all the way around here. Okay, that's starting to come together. I think, okay, so. Now we're going to go back and we've done a little bit everywhere, but let's go back and do a little bit more on her face. So we can, um, or I'll, you know what I'll do is work a little bit on her hair just to show you how I would, might approach that. I'll use some um, Queen Gold a little bit at a time. I'll use some, um, I hope I didn't lose that there because my it was not looking at me, which is fine. Okay, so we'll just do a little bit of hair, and I know we have to wind up then. So let's try just spots, just a little bit of spots. This is how I'll approach it. I did one, I did one layer of just yellow, you know, and now I'm going to try to blend in. This is very, it becomes very tedious, but uh, it, the effect is really nice. 
So hopefully this will work. Um, let's try over here. Just a um, little yellow. This is the light part over here. Oops, that's too heavy. You want it in this kind of a, for this type of work that I do, you want it to look kind of PC, not um, masses of, of hair. You want to have some little color blocks in there to balance that out. This is going to be a little darker over here, so let's do this burnt, it's called Quinn Burnt Orange, it's not Burnt Sienna. Quinn Burnt Orange, let's try some of that. It's a nice color, and you can put anything with it, you know, like I might um, put some of the, some yellow with it, some Quinn Gold with it, just to tone it down a little. There, so how's that? Yeah, it's getting there. A little bit. And you can kind of see how the painting is becoming developed. And I like that. That looks a little weird. We'll bring this down here. These can go in here. And as you do your glazes, um, I do the lightest part. I do the lightest part. And kind of overall, like, uh, I'll do the lightest part, uh, let's say, just up here. But then the heavier parts are over and over, but they're still very light. And the color is very light and it's just a different layer over it but i always want what's beneath that to show through so this is let's get some of this yellow in here okay see how that goes and then i can drop in some of this nice i like that Drop in some of that nice, um, that's the Quinn Gold and the Quinn Burnt Orange, which I've gone to Quinn Burnt Orange instead of Burnt Sienna. It's just a warmer color, a little richer um, on my palette. There. My palette uh, quickly consists of Alizarin, Scarlet Lake, Vermilion Hue, Brilliant Orange, Oriolan, Windsor Yellow Deep, Quinn Gold, um, Quinn Burnt Orange, Antwerp Blue, um, Indigo, very rarely, Peacock, uh, Burnt Umber, let's get a little of this in there, um, and <clears throat> French Ultramarine, uh, Hooker's Green, and um, probably Mineral Violet. There. I like, I just, again, let's put some more in here to make it mix. Okay, this looks nice. I think it's probably kind of a good stopping point here. Um, I think, you know, I'd like to do some more of this. Maybe I'll just do a little bit more on her face because that's always fun. And then I'll stop. I don't want to, you know, have you guys have to watch forever. So there's heavier, there's darker in here. So we need to develop some of that. So here's what we're going to do. This little part here, like that. And it'll be really fun to do her arm. Uh, that's a nice, that'll be a nice piece. Oh, let's see this one. Let's get a little bit. Um, no, let's try. Let's try this up here because we do, this is a dark spot. And so it's going to need to have more done on it. I don't like to go heavy at the beginning. This is all kind of dark in here. Okay. There we go. I'll just finish this up here. Just I wanted to get some of this in here, but let me let me try that. It's, no, it keeps looking at me, so I need to get over there. No, I'll do that. Let's drop something in pretty. Scarlet Lake. There we go. So we're getting our face in there. So I think I'll stop there. Let me get you a little close look to it. And you can kind of see how, you know, she's developed. Hopefully. There we go. Okay. Well, 
thank you very much. And I hope this was helpful. And um, again, you can contact me if you have any questions about my palette or my procedure or anything. Um, I've just been continuously trying to work on this and make it better. So um, with different programs, I, as I said, I never go to Photoshop because I cannot do it. But if you can do Photoshop, it's probably a one-stop thing to manipulate your photos. So anyway.